Hi all, Hal here with more Space Engineers, and we have a new content patch that dropped on Thursday. Oh, we were finished off the old season, and we're going to start a new one this week. But, we got some things to talk about, so first, we have to get started. So let's go. Happy Monday, everybody. Hopefully you are having a fantastic week thus far and had a terrific weekend. Oh, it's holiday time in the U.S. once again, and ah, for most of you folks around the world. <laughs> so for those who are celebrating, happy holidays. Oh, all right. So, as we were saying, basically with the new content patch, I wanted to get a new start in Space Engineers. We were kind of... Uh, I don't want to say running out of ideas, but we were definitely at the point where the game was getting a, uh, probably a little tedious, because we weren't really getting anything done other than some just miscellaneous work. So, what we've got going on is, for those who follow over on Twitter, you've probably seen this already. I put up a poll, links will be down in the description, and if I can get YouTube to let me do it, I'll put it up in the screen somewhere here for you to click through. Um, but what we were talking about doing this time around is just doing something that's completely random and, you know, hopefully fun. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, so there's actually going to be a couple of different, I don't want to call them one-offs, but definitely um, divergent series that are all taking place within the same save world. So what we've done is I've gone ahead and built a hangar, and as you can see, we've got a bunch of mods, well, a couple of mods anyway, installed on this save. Um, but what we're going to do is working from this base, we're not going to focus so much on what we normally do. We do a lot of gameplay progression, and then in between the progression pieces, you know, we build something and we continue on with it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to have three different, um, like I said, I don't want to call them standalone, but I guess three alternating uh, storylines. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to do a couple of different things, right? The first one's going to be what I'm jokingly referred to as Panda My Ship. Basically, it's where we take a ship, either something that I've been working on in the past, or just grab a random ship off the uh, the workshop, and we choose this. We you know, basically just kind of select the theme, modify the hell out of the ship, and see where it goes. It might blow up. It may not. It might fly. It may crash and burn horribly. <laughs> the fun is in finding out. Okay, the second one is going to be a, a segment that I call Ship Busters. Basically, this is a space engineer's take on uh, Mythbusters, where we will go through, there's a lot of different ideas and stories about things that do or don't work in space engineers, like, you know, using gravity drives. Does, does that still work? Well, let's build a ship and find out. And so what we're going to do is each, uh, each segment of that will be taking, we'll be focusing on one, maybe two of the uh, the myths and legends of what's going on in Space Engineers or what has happened in Space Engineers. That way everybody knows and you can actually see things happening. So, you know, let me know if there's anything that you want to see actually tried. And then the third one, which so far at the time of recording already has a couple of votes, um, is what I refer to as the Wheel of Clang. So... I'm sure everybody's familiar with Wheel of Fortune, right? You spin a wheel, the, get some money, you know, it, it lands on a dollar value, you choose letters and numbers or whatever, you know. Well, what we're going to do is something like this. There's two rows of uh, LCDs. The top one is a general theme, and then the, below it are two theme elements. So what will happen is, is all of these will have something on them, there may be duplicates, there may be uniques, there may even be some special things where we have a, you know, one might be warheads, and it's like, blow up the base. You never know. <laughs> and what will happen is, is this whole thing will spin, 
And when it is done spinning, the whatever is the focus of the light, so in this case it would be this one, that would be the theme and element that we have to build with. Right? So what you would do is, whatever the element is and the associated theme, so if it was, say, cargo transport and the element was hydrogen thrusters, we would have something that had hydrogen thrusters and probably you know the idea is that it's going to be hopefully entertaining and comical so instead of one hydrogen thruster it might be like 50 <laughs> so never quite sure what you're going to get and i figured that this would be something that helps push my creativity a little bit um because i don't really want to have things duplicated so much but what i want to try and do is you know work with what my uh, I guess skill set would be, you know, and just have some fun with things because you know some of the some of the episodes, they could be as short as five ten minutes. Not likely, most likely it's going to be fifteen to thirty at minimum, but you never know. And some of them might actually be longer. Now the thing is, is that, like I said, I don't want to focus too much on the resource gathering because you know it's just. All that really does is slow us down. So all of these builds will most likely be creative builds, um, except for the Panda My Ship. Panda My Ship is probably going to be something where I actually go and do the build. You know, that way you can actually see the entire build process. So we will start from frames, bring in the plates and uh, other components and things like that. But what I will probably end up doing is instead of bulk gathering everything, is just going into creative and spawning in, you know, like, say, half a million units of particular material. Because once you have the material, it's, you know, it's the same thing. It's not like you're really doing anything. It doesn't really add to gameplay for these types of series. So what I'll, what, like I said, what I'll do is um, I will probably spawn in the resource, um, most likely in a final process set. So... It wouldn't be like I spawn in thruster components. I would spawn in, say, platinum and silicon and whatever. And what we'll do is if we find something that we're missing, we'll just add it to the, the list of stuff. But, yeah. So that's the idea. And like I said, we prob I'm basically going to be taking the rest of this week to spend with uh, friends and family since it is the holiday season. I do have some videos that I want to catch up on uh, releasing for y'all, mostly the multiplayer stuff. I think we still are four videos, three or four videos behind on that series. So I want to get all of that caught up so you will have videos this week. Um, I will try to put out the first of these, um, these segments, hopefully this week. Um... Uh, one of the things I'd like to show... Actually, you know what? Let me show you what this thing is going to do. Oopsie. There. Right. So we turn everything on. Everything is on. Hit button 2. I need to update the, the list. And it starts spinning. After so long, there's actually a, a series of timer blocks that are running everything for us. Now, if you want to stop the uh, system... You just hit number three, and that'll lock the rotor wherever it ends. And then number four resets the entire process. So, But as time progresses on, you'll see these wonderful things. That usually takes, um, I don't know, from the time that the power's cut. Oh, like 10, 15 seconds. Maybe as much as 30 seconds. Um, I'm going to do random times on how long the, the rotor is allowed to rotate. Oh, that's actually a perfect example. Okay, in this case, whatever the two elements are, you'd have to use both. Ah. <laughs> so if the theme was um, warheads and an element was launcher and another element was gravity, I'd have to build some, I'd have to build a giant gravity launch, like a gravity based cannon. Oh, that could actually be pretty fun, come to think of it. So, uh, yeah, that's the the game in a nutshell. And it... Let's go 
go ahead and reset everything. And basically I have a I have the system set up so that it can reset off of button press. So then when you're ready, you just come back over and go through the sequence again. <laughs> now, one of the things that I want to do, whenever we do a episode, regardless of which of the three uh, segments that we do, at the end of that week, um, as part of the Friday publish, the intent is that the I will actually do a world publish, so you will have all of the mods, you will have everything that's in the world at the time of the Friday video. And since these are three segments that are all taking place in the same setting, inside the same save, um, you will have all of the things from that for the week. And like I said, we'll do that at the end of each week, we'll have the publish, and then for over the weekend, folks can do whatever they want, you know, and if you have anything that you want to try doing, you're more than welcome to, which is why we're making the, the save available. Ah, all right. So for the folks who are curious about the builds, because I actually <laughs> get a lot of people who ask me just about the builds. Basically, this is a hanger that I threw together. Um, we'll talk about the craft that are floating around out here in a second. And what we did is I went ahead and just mirrored everything so you actually have two crew quarters in here. So if you wanted to use this, um, I will release the base because all of this is one big thing. Everything except for that little building over there. So the bunker area, all the runways, and this base are all one uh, continuous element. Which actually works out really well. You have gangways that you can get up into, up into the, the crosswalks, or the um, walkways. You know, it's just a nice little set piece. We also have a hangar, or um, landing gear for building. So if you wanted to do a build or have a ship docked in here that doesn't have landing gear, you could actually park it up there. And we have, you know, control release controls over here to switch the locks. Um, and the entire area, when these doors are closed, the entire hangar is, uh, is pressurized. If you close the doors on the bedrooms, those are also pressurized. And then we have an airlock system set up over here so that you can get in and out without depressurizing the entire thing in case you want to use it on a non-Earth-like planet. Okay, so we will go talk about what we've got over there in a second. Let me walk you through the ships that we have just kind of floating around. Um, one of the folks in the uh, Space Engineers community went through and has been capturing blueprints for ships that are available within the economy update. So for the, the folks who are playing with the economy enabled and have the factions, these are some of the ships that you can get out of there. These are two of the miners. Uh, did we lose power on you? Oh, looks like you lost power. Ah, oh, because the engines are off. Uh, do, 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 do. Right? Yeah, there it is. There you go. Just so you can see what the things are. So this is the gerbil miner. That's the aggressive miner. In case there was any doubt. <laughs> Uh, and then um, I think I have no those are the only ones I have of the economy ships currently loaded this little beastie here is a ship that I was working on I don't know probably close to six months maybe eight months ago and it's a little crop duster ship and basically the idea for this thing is that I wanted to have a vehicle that was uh, race ready because I was working on a map and I'm still working on it on, when I have you know more than five minutes to do something with but I'm working on a race course that we're going to use these on um, that will have automated gates and tracking on it so using sensors and timers and a bunch of other things and some scripting basically what it will do is it'll track um, your progress through uh, as you get through the course and it'll update based on, you know, who gets in there and what's going on. So, yeah, it's um, 
it's a fun little thing, and we have another version of it over there. It's the same ship, just with a solar panel on the back of it. Over here you have a vehicle that Adredden, for those who watch the multiplayer series, you know who Adredden is. This is something that he built when him, S'more, and myself were still doing multiplayer videos. Uh, we were working on some, uh, some storyline stuff, and this is one of the things that he built as part of what became a storyline series that unfortunately we didn't get a chance to to do too much with so we never released but eh, it's a beautiful ship i mean it's obviously it had shields and a bunch of other things that we don't have all the mods for uh, loaded currently so it spawned in with some things missing like the shield generators but it's okay uh this is one of the worker shuttles that i put together i don't know maybe two series ago now um, it was around the time that the economy update went live. And that's where this one's from, but you get to see me build this on camera, so... Uh, yeah, but these are the types of things that I'll be taking, um, specifically as part of the, like, Panda My Ship or Ship Builders, or, or Ship Busters, rather, um, and playing with in the system, in, the, in those series. Right, so let's come over here. So the system itself, the entire area, the space is set up around the idea of having, you know, we've got the runways, so we actually have areas to test things. Uh, we have the helicopter pad or the helipad. So one of the things that I want to I want to work on is having a place that we can showcase certain mods as well, because there's things like the airplane parts mod or the deadly reentry mod, um, some of the helicopter parts, you know, those types of things. That people ask about and what we'll be able to do is we'll actually be able to use this as a testing and training facility as well so if there's a mod that you're curious about we can put that up as part of the ship buster segment um, and you know we'll focus on things that the community is curious about as well so it's not just me going hey this this is something that was fascinating to me or you know I'm kind of curious to see if it still works so uh, if you have suggestions feel free to let me know the building over there is something that I built as part of a live stream, I want to say, like, I don't know, almost two years ago now. Um, it's been there for a while. I had to rebuild it because the mod, some of the mods that I was using in it don't exist anymore, um, unfortunately. So, yeah, but it's a nice little, just kind of a temporary hangar style thing. It was built with the idea of being used in survival. So you could have a docking area where you could bring in either flyers or ground-based vehicles, dock them into the ship, or into the uh, into the hangar. And you are no longer piped in, are you? I don't think you're piped in anymore. I have to check that. Let's see, because you are piped through there, but you don't go anywhere else. Okay. See. Finding things, always finding things, right? Here, we'll just do this really quick, because we'll... There we go. <laughs> Alright. But this was a control area, there's habitation areas over here, like bedrooms, and this is using the old style to tell you how old this stuff is. You know, I was using the hallways for the beds and things. We've got the old walls and partial walls for desking for desk areas as well and then i think i had an lcd on top of this like a um the wide panel lcd in there but all of the stuff that i had in here that was filling up uh things like i said some of those mods don't exist anymore so i've been slowly rebuilding this and that'll be a little side project from time to time but this thing is a actual survival base and what I want to do is get it as vanilla as possible. I think it is now actually completely vanilla. Um, but once it's done, this is another one of those that'll go up on the workshop for people to play with. And I do mean vanilla. I mean, I don't even have any of the DLC added. Oh, no, I do have DLC on it. Because I have the walkways. Hmm. We'll see. Uh, I'll probably replace that with the vanilla walkways, just so that it's completely vanilla for everybody. All right. And then the headquarters building. 
This is the welcome to Panda Industry. <laughs> you probably recognize this base. Um, basically, what I did is I, I grabbed a copy of it and then modified the hell out of it. And yes, that is a salt generator. Don't ask. <laughs> oh, but one of the things we did is we went ahead and added in some oxygen farms. We added in a, a stacked. I should say double stack um, solar farm. That's what I went to say. So we've actually got 10 solar panels out here. And that is, for the most part, powering the entire base. Uh, we've got some solar in other places as well, like over on top of the building over there. But again, that is not part of this. So it won't show up in this build, in this build's uh, workshop. But it will show up in the world publish so you, if you want to see that building we'll make sure that all of that is included in the world publish as well um, everything else in here you're probably already familiar with the one thing that i did do is i changed up the the bridge area here the tower so you actually have a bunch of seating uh, it is completely pressurized now and there's even the soda dispenser in there for those who may get thirsty while they're they're working on stuff and blowing up stuff in the uh, in the neighborhood. So uh, yeah, so that's the area that we're going to be working with. That is the overview of what we're planning on doing in each of these areas, and the overview of what each of the segments are going to be. And like I said, each of those segments will be their own episode, but they will all be within this one save. So. Each segment you may see things that don't look quite right because you don't remember being in the last segment because it might not have been it may have been in something completely different and uh, yeah that's our test field over there you can ignore the burning in the background that's that's fine it, it'll buff out <laughs> anyway all right so that is basically where we are there will be a link down in the description below that will take you over to Twitter for those who are using Twitter. If you're not already following me over there, you want you want to do so because I do a lot of the um, like the polls and votes and stuff over there because it's just a little bit easier. And it's always nice to, you know, be kept up to date with what's going on around here. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you hit that like button, especially if you want to see more, because if you do, you also want to want to subscribe. Not only do the likes, subscriptions, and even the comments really help the channel to grow, but it lets me know you're enjoying the content and it also lets me know what you think about the content in case you don't enjoy it for some reason. <laughs> anyway, on that note, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Happy holidays to everybody. And uh, we will see you back here next time for more Space Engineers. As always, folks, take care and be safe out there, everybody. Ah, oh, look at our runways. Ah, now we just have to build our list of themes and elements for the first spin of the wheel. 